this is officially my first video for the mental health stuff. Technically I already had one, which was the anxiety one. Um, that was before I decided on the idea of a series, if you will. Um, I will touch on the anxiety a little bit because sometimes that helps with depression and because in my story and someone else's story who is very kind to have sent it to me, anxiety plays a part. Um, so I will touch on that a little bit again, but I think the main part of this will be about depression. Obviously I'll tell the stories and then I'll go on to explain about depression and stuff. I'm going to obviously be reading from the, the, my dad's iPad. Um, I'm going to be reading their story and I'll read the first part of my story because it's about the bullying. And I think I explained it better in a thing that I wrote before on a advice blog I made. Um, so I'm just going to read the first part about me bullying and then I'll just talk about the rest after by myself. Um, so I'll get on to it. So I don't know if I can share the name of this lovely person. I probably should have asked. I don't really think I need to though. Um, but uh, basically, um, <clears throat> this is from, uh, as I said, a fan. Um, and this is the only person that sent anything to me, so I'm very thankful. Uh, so, anxiety has ruled my life for years. It stopped me from getting girlfriends, from making friends and just enjoying life. I've ended up with, with multiple times in the hospital from dehydration and hunger because anxiety has stopped my body from doing basic tasks. I am a scout and this made camping and doing activities hard. Also, my school studies became impossible. I can't get close to a deadline without having a horrible panic attack and feeling sick. Anxiety has now caused stress, which just makes the anxiety itself worse. It has also caused depression. This also happened due to bullying. This made me feel worse day after day. I've had attempts at killing myself, but I stay alive to make those people who make my life hell, the people who bullied me, know that I can't, that I'm not going to kill myself. I have seeked medical assistance. I do regularly visit a psychologist, and things are slowly getting better. So that in itself is great because he's, they're trying to sort it out, they're getting help and things are getting better. Granted, it's shit because they had to go through this, but it happens. This is a real life experience. This is really how someone feels and how someone has had to live their life. So it is shit and I'm so proud of this person for telling me their story and for letting me tell you guys because it may help you it may think yeah yeah I understand that I have that or it could help you understand someone else that you know that is suffering so I'm very grateful for that story and honestly I hope you know if you're watching this that you can always talk to me and thank you very very much okay so I'll uh I'll read the first part of my thing about the bullying and then I'll just go on. So, um, I'll tell you right away that I have depression, social anxiety, and I'm also recovering from self-harm and anorexia. I guess everything started when I began to get bullied in primary school. I'm still getting bullied now. It got worse after primary school, however, right now it seems to be getting slightly better. I'm not too sure why the bullying started to be honest. It started off as just name calling, which I guess is how it usually starts. Then I got beaten up for the first time. Now the first incident for me... I've lost myself, sorry. The first incident for me being beaten up was pretty hard for me for a few reasons. A, I was being beaten up, I mean, shit, and it was by someone who I thought I could trust. B, my boyfriend at the time was sat there watching the whole thing. It mattered to me because I thought he cared, okay? Granted, I was young at this age, but I thought he cared, so. Um, and his brother was there as well, they were just both sat there watching me. 
and C, I got dumped the next day so that he could go out with the person that beat me up. I'm not really one to fight back against people and it wasn't long after that I got beaten up again by the same person and another one of my supposedly closer friends. Now by this time I had started to withdraw myself. I stopped going out, I didn't socialise as much as I did and I was terrified of being beaten up. Although staying at home didn't help much either. I guess you could say that it felt like I was getting bullied by my little sister and my older sister. Granted, that's probably not what they meant, but sometimes it felt like it because of the stuff that I was getting anyway. And there was, a, there are a lot of people that think that my little sister can beat me up and she has hit me and hurt me before and granted, you know, siblings fight and they, whatever. But at that time it just felt like another bully was being added to the mix. So, when I started secondary school, things seemed to be getting slightly better. I made it through year 7 without being majorly bullied, but then in year 8, things started to take a downward spiral. It was probably halfway through the year when someone spread a rumour about me. Now, this rumour is probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my entire life, and it amazes me how some people could actually believe it. Apparently, I had popped my cherry with a lightsaber. Now, I can almost guarantee that you guys laughed because everybody usually does when I tell them. But obviously, people bullied and do bully me because of it. Because they wouldn't let it go. I don't know whether they believed it or whether they just found it funny to make me miserable. <laughs> to be 100% honest, I wasn't really that fussed that someone had spread a rumor about me because I know it was a lie. And anyone that could believe it, some, oh, anyone that could believe something as ridiculous as that clearly wasn't worth my time. But what bothered me was that it was spread around to practically every school around where I live. I'd be out and about, and someone I don't even know would make a reference to it. They'd sing the lights, the Star Wars theme tune, or they'd make lightsaber noises, or they'd be like, "Oh, that's that girl," and you know, they just idiots basically I still get it now people I don't know say it I don't live in London but when I went to Comic Con someone was like oh you are that girl that did that thing with a lightsaber it's like I don't know you I'm not even in where like the city that I live in how is it possible that this rumor has spread so far something that probably people didn't even think mattered how is it that it spread this far why would you, not even knowing who I am, want to make me feel like crap when I'm trying to have fun? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what else bothered me was that there was a one point where I was with two of my friends and two girls, one who I didn't know, decided to inter interrogate me about this rumour. The girl that I did know started to record the whole thing on her phone. And the other girl kept accusing me of lying when I said it wasn't true. And she uh, she kept following me and pushing me every time I tried to walk away to get home. She was continuously shouting out the rumour and little kids who had been playing in the park decided that it was funny and joined in. One of my friends stuck up for me at the time and I was really grateful for it but I was very worried that he was getting in trouble for sticking up for me. I still get people mention the rumour, and now I'm not even at school. I still tend to get a lot of hate on a daily basis. So, okay. It's the bullying stuff out of the way, so I'll just leave that and I'll probably just talk about stuff now. The, okay. <laughs> it's really hard for me to talk about, so if I smile, it's because that's my way of dealing with awkwardness. Um, So the bullying was hard enough. That sent me... <laughs> the whole rumour thing made me lose my friends. Well, not technically, I made me lose my friends, but because of this rumour, I got so scared to go anywhere that I just stopped going to see my friends and they just stopped giving... Like, they just gave up trying to see me because I wasn't going to go anywhere. I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted... 
to be alone. I just wanted to cry. Everything felt like it was just crumbling. And I couldn't get away from it anywhere. At school it was just awful because people would make comments even not just not even just about the rumour, it was about anything. And I don't understand why you'd want to make someone feel so pathetic. Someone that's not even done anything to you. There's people that I thought actually liked me. You told me that I'm really sorry that I judged you and hated you because of this and that. So I thought we were friends. And you were part of the people that wanted me to feel like crap. And I don't understand why. I am... Um, things got slightly better and I'm okay and I've got a few friends now sometimes I still feel alone and like they don't really care I don't want to talk to anyone because I don't want to be a burden that's not right I know it's not I know I should have someone I should talk to when I was younger uh, I got I guess you could call it sexually abused. This guy kept touching my arse and my tits and just wouldn't stop it and I told him to when we were on a school trip and I kept telling him to stop because he thought I liked him so he thought he could do it and I tried to get away from him and um, at the end of the week because it was like a camping thing, I don't think it was a week, it might have been a week, I, t I told a teacher and she called me ridiculous and said to stop lying about something so serious. She's like, why would you lie about something like that? Of course you wouldn't do that. And that made me worried about telling anyone about anything like that. I didn't even want to tell my parents. If they're watching this, this is probably the first time I've heard of this. It's not okay to make someone feel like it doesn't matter or it's like, they don't matter, just like, I know it's sick and people lie about stuff like this, but I was a kid. I was scared. I was upset because I didn't want it to keep continuing and you just made me feel like it didn't matter. There was another case after where it's kind of similar sort of thing. I don't particularly want to talk about that one very much, um, but I didn't tell anyone again because I felt like no one believed me the first, the first time. So I might be different now. Obviously, that's kind of live with me. Sometimes I still think about it. Sometimes I still think about maybe I should have talked to someone at the time. Maybe I should have punched him in the face. <laughs> it's not going to help anything though. As much as I hate to admit it, I'm a bad person. I know that. At least in my eyes, I am. And as much as people might want to argue with that because they don't fully know me, in my head and my heart, I am a bad person. I feel like a bad person. I feel like I probably deserved everything I've had. And I think that's partly down to depression. It's partly because I got beaten to the point, not physically beaten, but emotionally beaten to the point where I thought, I must deserve this for someone to want to do this to me. I mean, why else, why else would they be doing it? Why else would they want to make me feel like crap if I'm not? And now I'm just to the point where I can't believe anything anyone says. If someone says a compliment to me, it makes me feel sick. So I think, how could you lie to my face? How could you tell me a lie? I'd love to feel pretty, to feel comfortable in my own body, to feel like I matter, but I don't. And as much as anyone tells me otherwise, I can't. My head just won't let me believe it. And it sucks. 
because I want to feel like people care. I want to feel like I have proper friends. I mean, it gets better, but then it gets worse. It's just the cycle, really. It just it feels like I'm just gonna get pulled back again when things are getting better. It feels like I don't deserve it to get better. It's like something's gonna come along. Something's gonna come along and ruin this. The moment I've been getting bad again, I've been feeling a lot more shit. I've been feeling the depression a lot more. It's been affecting me a lot more. And it's been so hard to do things. To convince myself to do it. And to convince myself not to do other things. I don't want anyone to feel alone because when you feel like this you don't want to feel alone people have said they've started getting confident again and at first I felt like I was but now I just feel like I'm going backwards I just want to be happy but I also want to make everyone else happy first. I don't... <sighs> Why would you want to make someone to this point? To the point where they feel like they must be the worst person in the world. Because I know so many other people get it. And even depression itself, it just does it. You don't have to get bullied. It can just make you believe these horrible things about yourself. And obviously a lot of times people don't know. They don't understand and they make jokes. And to you it seems like a joke, but to them... It could just be your way of telling the truth. I'm struggling to breathe. It feels like there's this dark cloud following me around everywhere waiting to ruin everything if I'm feeling happy. It's dragging me down. It's pouring bad thoughts on me. Bad feelings on me. It's making me so tired. Not just physically but emotionally tired to the point where I don't want to deal with anything because I can't. I am so scared. I am really scared of not. I'm scared that I'm not going to make it to an old age. I'm scared that I'm not going to let myself get to an old age. That I'm going to get worse and worse and worse and to the point where I just can't take it anymore. And I'm too scared to tell people. And I don't want that to be the case for anybody. Because it sucks. I want you to feel like you could talk to someone. And I know it's hard. And it's shit. And you don't want to be a burden but you're not. I promise. I want to help you. I know I just like to be scared. I can't speak for everyone with depression because it reacts with everyone differently. But I can tell you that it's scary. You need to think before you speak a lot. And if someone tells you they have depression, then you just need to, to be there for them. Sometimes it doesn't even, you don't even need to talk to them, just be there. Just sit with them quietly and let them know you're there. 
watch videos with them, text them if you want, take their mind off everything. You don't need to talk to be a good friend. I don't know whether I've talked enough about it or whether I've explained it enough because I know I have mostly just been talking about how it affects me and how I feel. Depression is just something that won't necessarily go away very quickly. It's something that needs to be worked hard to fight as of most mental health issues. as long as we're there to support each other that's all we can do if you want me to go into more detail about it or if you think there's something I should have said please let me know in the comments if you think this was a shitty video please let me know and I'll probably try and make a better one to discuss it a bit more I could always do a part two about depression um, you think there's a mental health issue that I should cover next please let me know and obviously as always you could send in any videos or stories to me please do because I know it will help people understand more I really really hope this helps in some way and that someone out there feels like someone understands because I do I really care about you guys. I just want everyone to be happy. <laughs> I don't, like I said, I don't know if this was a very good video. I hope I did a good job. Bye guys.